Hey, welcome to another video. In this video, I'll show you how product variant works and how we can design it. Product variance is one of the most complicated uh, topic in Shopify. And if you understand it well, it will be easy for you to design your team. And the reason I say it is complicated is because the way the data is structured. So I'm not going to go too much deep into how it works behind the scene, but I'll try my best to make it simplify for you so you can understand how exactly it works and how you can extend it in the future. So let's start. Here I have this product, right? This product does not have a variant. If a product does not have a variant, uh, it is called like this product has a default variant, which the first product will be like the variant also. So by that, I mean, if you come to the product uh, URL and write JS or JSON, you will get this variance uh, object in here. Now you see it has only one and it has a default variant of one in here, but you don't see it. So this product does not have more than one. Okay, cool. Uh, let's add some variant to this. Currently, this is the only product who has variant. We added in the previous video and it will display small, medium and large. If you check here, when we change this, the URL also change. This is the variant ID. This is how Shopify work. Now, if I change the large, the variant ID will become to change to large. If I add this to cart, it's going to add the large one to the cart. It works fine in here. This is the default uh, Shopify and down theme. And I'll show you the code also. Let's add the same variant to this product. If I come to the back end, this is the product. I will scroll down in here. If you come to the bottom, let's say this product has more options, size, color. Let's add some. If I add some size to this, uh, let's say I will start from a small, medium, large. Let's say it has only three sizes. We can add more options, up to three options. A product has up to three options, means you can add color, you can add material, you can add style, you can add only three of them. Now you see from here it has four as default. Let's add this color, but you cannot add more than three. Oh, okay, if you, if you come here, let's add the default option in here. Let's say black, white, red, oops, green, something like this. And if we add another option, you see there is no other option to add. This is the last one. I'm not going to add the third one, but as soon as I save this, it is going to generate the variant for me at the bottom in here. Now, if you think about this, if you scroll down, you might say, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? It should have seven variant, but it is not like that. You don't count it like that. If you count it here, it is more than seven. You will multiply four times seven, uh, three times four is 12. So in here you have 12 different variant in here. That's why if you come to the product again, I will check the JSON version of this. And now you have 12 different variants in here. And the way you display it in the front end is this style. Size, how many sizes do you have? If I come here at the top, you have three sizes. It should show three sizes. How many color you have? It should show color, something like this. That is easy to select for the end user. Otherwise, one of the easiest ways to look through the product display them, like um, display 12 of them. Say if someone wanna pick the medium, they can say medium red, red color. If someone wants the medium white, they will pick the medium white. But for the user experience, that is not acceptable by Shopify. That's why you have to display each option separately, something like this. That is the complicated part. I will show you the code behind the scene also, but let's come to the product now. I'm not going to work too much on this. Now this is how it will display. If I come to the code, uh, this is of course in the variant picker. Uh, it has a, a condition in here. Here is how I, the product default work. Unless has only default variant. If product has only default variant, we do not display this because the product does not have any variant. And there is also a condition of if the style is equal to button, it will display a radio. Otherwise, it will um, just come here and show a product selector. A select is just a select option. Uh, that is in Shopify. Uh, sitting, if you check the block sitting, uh, you can pick which option you want. 
but yeah it comes here they have a custom tag in here called variant um, variant radio if you search for this it is in the global.js if you open it here it has been like written and if you scroll up a little bit so here is the radio it is extending the variant selector if i find where is the variant this is the variant selector a custom a HTML element here is how it works on change if anything changes in here it will call this function on variant change on variant change will call all of these functions and all of these functions are written inside this class and we are going to review one by one what is this uh, this one is picking which variant which option is selected if someone click on an option either it is color or size it will assign it to this variable this dot option uh, there's a lot of JavaScript going on in here. Um, I hope you understand like how this work. In here, when you see this option, it is basically as if you are um, um, declaring a global variable in this class. And this option will be available across all of these functions. And if I scroll down, this current variant will be the same. So it will just declare a variable called current variant. It is going to call this function and this function will return an object if i go to this function now it will return an object that contains the json version of all the variants now where is that data coming from if i come here you see this function it will just find out the, 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 the data and then return it how it finds out it's going to query a, a tag that has application of json now if you come here in the code Let's open the inspector. I'll show you where that code is. If you select this uh, fill set, at the bottom of the fill set, there is a JavaScript tag with application JSON. And inside this, you have this JSON version. Now, where is it in the code? If you come to the code, this is the JSON version of the variance. So it will pick all of that and it will assign it to the variant data. Then it will return it. So whenever someone call this, in here it will return an, an object of all the variants and it will loop through this i'm not going to explain because it is going to take too much time but this one they will update the meta this one update the url this one update the shareable link this one will update the input and all of them will work together properly i could rewrite this in alpine js it will be less code than this but i think it is totally fine to use this and if you want me to make a video on a custom variant selector, I will do that in the future. But for now, that's that's nice and it's displaying properly. Now let's design it a little bit. Uh, so the design in my mind is the same design that we have in Down Team. So if we search for Down Shopify Team, it has a similar design, but uh, I want to just show you how it looks. If I scroll down, let's pick this product. And this is how it will display. Okay. This is how it will display the variant color and the size and all of them if it is a, a button it will display something like that so if i come here i'm going to quickly design it so not going to take too much time first of all this is the option that will display uh oops this is the selector I'm not going to touch this part only the variant part in here legend and this one let's say font is going to be medium and also what else that should be fine let's give it a little bit of uh, padding x this one uh, will display color and size which is the option value okay let's come to the code in here let's refresh okay displaying properly in here now let's hide this radio when we click on the label it is activating them right let's hide the radio and let's display only the labels so this is the label this is the input let's write a class in here uh, we don't hide it okay we have to use sr only so it will be available only on a screen readers and this one will be hidden now let's design this one give it a class and also border and let's give it a border of gray so if i say gray on this much and then let's give it a little bit of padding of three from all around let's check it out how it will look if i refresh it 
let's refresh again yeah this is how it will look now okay looks good but the sizing is not okay the reason uh, it is not okay is because um, label is not displayed as a block so if it is a block level it will fit properly in this size so let's give it a block also or we can give it a flex but let's say let's make it inline block if we display a block then it will take the entire um, page in here so if I refresh it now it will look properly let's also give the whole wrapper which is the radio option a little bit of padding bottom of three and it will just add some space at the bottom and that should be it let's refresh oops again it is not taking that because this is not a block element again i am going to make this block so if that doesn't work for you it is because it is not a display as block so if i refresh this time it looks nice for me right now here is the thing it will display properly but how should i know which one is selected i'm going to fix that one and that will be the last one so if i say medium i click on this green if i add it to the cart it is adding medium green but there is no indication for the user that which one did i select so how would you do that like if you would be like if you would do that you might listen for a click event and make this active and something like that but there is an easy css trick like tricks so what i can do is i can come to css and say product form and in here let's select it let's select this product form input because it is all inside the legend i'll copy it and let's go inside of this now let's let me write a simple comment in css and see if github copilot can uh, auto complete this i'm going to say um um let's say let me think like how should i write it because uh, this is how i'm going to see i'm going to see select the checkbox after uh after which one of them like this is the input if this is checked select the label from here i can say select label after checked radio input ah here is how it looks like this is fine and this code is fine but it should add it as a radio input so it is not going to uh, display the radio input type now if I come here no it still is not going to pick so I'm going to write it like it is not that smart to pick uh, this properly instead of this I'm going to say input and the type for this should be equal to radio and that's it if it is checked go grab the label apply a text of black instead of text black I'm going to say bg black oops sorry and text should be white something like this if you understand like we are going to select the radio option which is checked uh, and after that we are going to select the label after that if i refresh this time let's see yeah this tree is selected now see medium and green now if i pick the small the small is selected what was the reason that this one was selected because in the url we have it already selected so if i remove all of this and refresh it it will pick the first one now the good part is i can pick the large one i can pick the red one i can add it to the cart and it should add the large red one in here how easy it is uh, i don't know like it is very easy to do it in here now one more thing i want to add is if i come here if someone have our orders i want to have the cursor pointer so it should be like a button if someone is clicking on a button now let's refresh it let's bring our mouse and it become a cursor so now people can select it and everything is looking great in here that's it i think it is looking properly one thing you have to remember is the design consi consistency that the height of this should be the same as the height of this and the button this is something you have to remember in your design but for me it is fine for now behind the scene i will fix all of this and i might display a grid in here using grid instead of the flex that is displaying 
so it match it will display everything properly so yeah that's it for the product vidin i hope this video has been informative thank you for watching and then in the next video one more quick thing i will do it in this page is uh, syncing this uh, product uh, add to cart in here it should display this properly you see all of these bugs that is happening in here i'll fix it in the next video and we should be all good to go for the product page thank you for watching i will see you in the next video